Hi. Today, continuing with our series labeled 3B, uh, 3 for uh, US, we're covering impressed fix here. Previously, we saw the names of actual people and stars. Uh, today, however, we're concerned with manufacturers, company names, and brand names. And uh, there's so much to cover here that I'm going to leave you just some notes at the end you'll see on paper because I just don't have time to go through uh, each and every name in, in any detail. But there are uh, other details I want to point out, and I might even venture into some minutia today. I want to go to our top row. Now, our top row features all hand-beveled picks. And as we uh, talked about before, hand-beveled picks were made prior to the late... 1920s, predominantly speaking. That's our general rule. Of course, there's always exceptions to, to most rules. Let's take this pick with the reverse R on it. Reverse RWB. That stands for Rudolf Wurlitzer Brand. It says Pick a Howard. Hmm, that's strange. Pick a Howard. Well, Rudolf had a son. His first name was Howard. And uh, that's a mandolin pick seen in a 1950 Wurlitzer catalog. And I think with our different lighting, some of the shots that didn't come out in our close-up videos uh, previous to this will come out now. This is an L and H. Here you can see the L. L and H, I hope so. Let's see here. Lion and Healy Washburn. Ah, too bad that's not coming through. Oh, there it is, just vaguely. Another huge company out of Chicago. And that pick is featured, actually, in a 1904 Line and Healy catalog. Uh, some other notes I'd like to make here. We start comparing things. I mean, we have Martin. We could cover Martin all day. But, of course, what we're, our focus here is on impressed picks. And... Uh, if we go down over here to the Bob Clifton's, we see quite a few with printing on them. This is some of the first printing to occur, 1946-47. Gold lettering. He first wanted to successfully print with gold lettering. And on mosaics as well. But uh, nice wide banded celluloid, usually seen in the 20s and 30s, but here we have it in the 40s also. Pop them up back to the top here. I want you to take a look at these two picks. Uh, compare the celluloids to those. This is a Milton G. Wolf, and this is a uh, red arrow right here. A lot of times we don't know the age of a pick, so we extrapolate and we find out that, oh, this has the same color as this, and I know the date of that one. Therefore, we could safely say that this Milton G. Wolf was probably made in the mid or late 20s. Milton G. Wolf owned a recording company and did some distribution and printing in, in the Chicago area. Uh, the Milton G. Wolf, the black one here, was said to be found, uh, one like it anyway, in the guitar case of Buddy Holly at the crash scene where he died. And uh, let's go up here to DeAndrea now, because these are rarely seen. In 25 years, I've only acquired one pick, such as this particular DeAndrea, with a box around an impression that says DA, and uh, only have one on celluloid in this style, too. And these go back to the 1930s and 1940s. Uh, Rosemary D'Andrea, now retired her and her husband from the company, saw these uh, types of picks and catalogs, but they didn't know that they actually existed. But they do. Here we have a nice red arrow, hand cut at the side, hand beveled, an interesting note here is that this, this pick could also be verified its age by a pick card. I have a number of pick cards I downloaded off the internet just to look at the celluloid style and compare to picks. Here we have a group Vibratone here and this Plectro that we saw earlier, as well as these radio stars, all on a type of celluloid that I call Army Brown. It occurred in the 1930s late 20s, 1930s, I don't see it after that. 
And uh, later on, when we get to the uh, D'Andrea picks, unmarked picks, we're going to see a whole bunch of different shapes in, in these colors here. Another nice red arrow with that wide banded celluloid. Nice smoky red streaks on it. Uh, take a look at this bell tone over here. See if we can't bring that into focus. Sure enough, that bell tone. Another nice celluloid right there. Really old, really distinct. It really jumps out at you because you're just not going to go to a music store and see that. I want to move down here to Doro now. And uh, take a look at that logo there. The Doro logo. But look at this celluloid. Isn't that beautiful against that... Uh, a white background, and this is made in layers. Each of these is a different strip, a different layer, and they're all put together in a slab, and then it's cut perpendicular to that to get that effect. Mentioning minutia earlier, uh, let, let's go into that a little bit. Take a look at this Martin, Mountain G roof, the scratch, and the Storo here. Every one has had its sides cut, not by me, but uh, apparently this was going on quite a bit during the 30s and 40s, and I have many more picks that that has happened to that we'll see later on. Why the fad started, I don't know, but it was there, and it's seen across manufacturers, pick styles, pick names, etc., I'm trying to look at some logos here that you may not have had a good close-up on earlier. Uh, I think we did do the Radio Star, but it's worth it again. Nice Radio Star logo. I'm so basic. No print. Just stamped in there uh, with, with a uh, mallet and, and, and a die. Stamp punch. Just a gorgeous trip, uh, pick. Take a look at the Gretsch, and we have to look at the Gretsch because this is the oldest Gretsch known to exist right here. As far as I'm aware, nice T-top in a distinctive shape called the 348. We could clearly say D'Andrea made that pick because that was their shape. And that's what I could tell you about the Plectro and the Vibratones right here, as well as the Radio Star. I haven't seen them in a catalog that said they were produced by D'Andrea, but I know they were produced by D'Andrea because they were distinct D'Andrea shapes. And this Plectro goes back to the 1927 D'Andrea catalog, and it's shape number 12. What a fine piece. What a fine piece. There's the Domino Rainbow Picks. What can I tell you about that? Well, aside from the celluloid, and it says Domino Rainbow Picks, at the moment, nothing. Uh, we could say it's probably the first circular pick. If it was, in fact, used as a pick. But it has pick there with a variation of spelling. P-I-X. So, Martin, I have a C-F Martin somewhere. I don't know where it's at. It's not featured here. Maybe that'll turn up later somewhere. U Eureka, nice distinct logo. Here we find it on a... Uh, Army brown celluloid. But you'll see it says right there, Eureka trademark. So I try to keep these videos to 10 minutes or less. Don't always succeed, but I just might here. I'm going to leave you with some notes since I didn't go into a lot of history here. Uh, these notes are going to have a brief bit of information for you to take a look at. That's a Maxwell. Not, there we go. Nice logo there. But all this information is verifiable on the internet, and that's where I get most of it from, in fact. So, if you're interested in the history of these names, I'm going to leave this here. You may have to stop it, because I'm not going to leave it on long. You need to pull the page down. But it shows you what some of these companies were. Guitar pick manufacturer, D'Andrea, huge. Distributors. There they are, their name brands. And commercial, commercial guitar pick brands down here at the bottom. So pause is necessary to read through that. If you're so inclined, I'm glad you come back. And uh, there's many, many more videos to come, all featuring vintage guitar picks. Thanks. Joe here from Playmore. Goodbye.